Podcast. Saquon changes teams. Uh, first player on this list who changed teams this offseason, going from New York to Philly. Uh, a better overall situation, a better overall, overall offense, a better quarterback, a better offensive line, better skill position players around him to take the pressure off. Saquon comes in as the RB6. He was the RB9 in points per game last year. Again, that was it was a brutal Giants offense. Daniel Jones went down. The, Daniel Jones wasn't playing well at all before he suffered the season-ending injury. And then it was Tommy DeVito. Tyrod Taylor missed a ton of time. It was a bad offense. I think Saquon averaged his fewest yards per carry in his career last year. But that was because the Giants just kept handing in the ball over and over again because it was their only option. It was the only thing they could do because they couldn't throw the ball. And anytime they tried to spell him with backup running backs, they averaged like two and a half yards a carry. So truly atrocious circumstances for Saquon Barkley last year. He still finished, I think, as the RB12 in total points and half PPR, and he tied for uh, ninth in points per game at the position. Now he goes to the Eagles. Yes, they lost Jason Kelsey at center, stalwart along the offensive line. Pretty much now considered like the one of the goats, if not the goat, at the center position in the history of the league. So there's going to be a drop off there, but there's still enough strong pieces along this offensive line, and it's just been year in year out just so much better than what the Giants have trotted out recently. Any way you can slice it, it's a better offensive line for Saquon than at any time he had in New York. Better quarterback play, better receivers to t- take the pressure off. Nobody's going to be able to stack the box against uh, against Saquon the way that that happened for him last year in New York. The only issue is again he's down at RB six. We have to kind of we have to cap these guys a little bit as excellent as they are because of the potential issues with touchdown upside when you have a rushing quarterback. That plays a huge variable in where we rank these guys. Jalen Hurts is the short yardage and goal line back for the Eagles. They're going to continue to run the tush push. Anytime they get on the goal line, Saquon's not going to be the one to get the opportunities. That is the that is the key difference where in Saquon's fantasy production from going to the Giants to the Eagles. When he was on the Giants, you knew he was getting those opportunities. With the Eagles, now you know he's probably not getting those opportunities. So the yardage should be there. The yards per carry should go up. Better situation, better offensive line. The yards per carry should be much better than it was last year. The problem with Saquon, the reason we can't rank him higher than six, is the touchdown upside is limited. Quarterbacks that can run, quarterbacks that can scramble, and in the particular instance with the Eagles, when they run the tush push damn near every time in short yardage situations, those are the scenarios that limit Running backs, from a fantasy perspective, it caps them. It gives them a a clearer ceiling because they're not as likely to score as many touchdowns. Saquon is excellent. He's He's had injury issues in New York. We'll see if that rears its head again in Philly. But the situation overall is the best of his career. We can expect better production from him. The touchdowns should be limited That's why we can't rank him any higher. Nevertheless, after ranking 12th overall at the position for half PPR last year and 9th in points per game, we can comfortably rank him a little higher than that in a much better situation. I have Saquon as my RB6 going into the 2024 season. (laughs) 